Hello and welcome to lesson five on our sequences and series. This is technically lesson 4.8 for those of you in my class. Um, so unit four, remember, was systems of equations and sequences and series kind of combined together. This is the fifth lesson, but we combined two lessons earlier, so that made this 4.8. Up to this point, we've talked about arithmetic sequences and an arithmetic series. And an arithmetic sequence means that you're add or you have numbers that are going up by adding. So for instance, like two, four, six, eight. That's arithmetic because when you go from one to the other, you're adding. Then we did geometric uh, sequences and a geometric series. Geometric meant that you were multiplying. So it would be like two and then six and then 18, and then why did I pick such a hard number to do? Um, times by 3. And you see all of these are times by 3. Okay, so these are arithmetic, and these are geometric. The difference is how they're going up or down. The numbers can go down too, right? They don't have to always be going up. Awesome. We also talked about sequences versus series. A sequence has commas in between. So notice that these ones are sequences because there's comma in between the numbers. Uh, a series would have addition signs. So 2, 4, 6, 8 is a sequence. 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 is a series. Wonderful. Today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about infinite geometric series. Infinite meaning that it goes forever. Geometric means that it's going up by a ratio by multiplying. And series means that it's being added. We're going to find some interesting thing happens when you have infinite geometric series. Um, two different very cool things can happen. This lesson will be pretty quick, and it's more almost like theoretical than a lot of calculations. Just kind of cool ideas. Okay, the two things that could happen. Um, if you have an infinite geometric series, you're either going to have a convergent geometric series or a divergent geometric series. A Convergent geometric series means that you're converging towards something. A divergent geometric series means you're going on forever and you're not actually approaching anything. I'll talk more about that in a second. An infinite geometric series, if we break down that definition, infinite means goes forever. Geometric means it has a ratio that it's going up or down by. And a series means it's adding. So for instance, this is an infinite because it goes forever, right? Dot, 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 infinite. Geometric. It's geometric because to get from one number to the next, it's timesing by 0 0.5 series because there's addition signs in between them. Awesome. Now that we have kind of have a good definition of an infinite geometric series, let's talk about our new definitions of convergent versus divergent. So a convergent geometric series means that if you were to calculate the sum of that geometric series, you would be actually approaching a value, um, like you would really be equaling something. You could get an answer. Okay, that's a convergent one. Your sum actually approaches something, you could really get an answer. A divergent series, um, the sum either continues to increase or decrease forever, and it has no ending. So this means this would equal infinity. Uh, for the most part, we just say it equals infinity. We'll talk more about that too. But a divergent one means that it's going forever. There is no end to it. It's never approaching an actual answer when you do the sum. Now that can be kind of confusing, so let's do an example. Okay. 
First one, we have a, let me zoom in right here, this. That's an infinite geometric series. I know it's infinite because it goes forever, dot, dot, dot. I know it's geometric because when I go from one number to the next, I'm timesing by 0 0.5. If you don't remember how I get that, you just take a number. Let's take 1 over 2. And you divide it. That's a division. Divide it by the number in front of it. And that will tell you what your series is increasing by. In this case, it's increasing by 0.5. Increasing by is not the best word, but this is called your ratio. Okay, that's what it's, the numbers are changing by. It's changing by a multiply, multiplication of 0 0.5. When you have a ratio that's in between negative one and one. Essentially, it's a decimal. Then you are going to have a convergent series. What this means is that if you calculated this, so if you calculated all these additions, and you added them over and over. You put this in your calculator. 1 plus 0.5 plus 0.25 plus 0.125 plus dot, dot, dot. You would eventually actually find out that you're adding up to be something. Now, we've already done the calculations down here. But if you were to put in your calculator the sum of the first three terms. So this would be 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4, right? That's the sum of the first three terms. It would equal 7. If you were to do the sum of the first five terms, so that would be 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 16, it would equal 7.75. And if you kept doing that, so you added the first seven terms, you added the first nine terms, you added the first 13 terms, you had the first 15 terms, you had the first 17 terms, you would notice that your answer is starting to converge towards something. It's getting closer and closer to a number. So if you look, every time I went from 7 to 7.75 to 7.9375 to 7.9844 to 7.999 to 7.9998 7.9999. Nine. I don't know how many nines I said there. You'll notice that this series is getting really, really close to something. Oh, I missed one here. It's getting really close to eight. Right? Like 7.99999. That's very close to eight. And if we kept going and we did the first. 25 numbers, it would be even closer. It would just add more nines on the end. If I did the first 100 sums, it would get really, really close. Until the point that it got so close to 8, that is basically 8. And we say that it's converged to 8. So we say the sum of this infinite series. Whoa. Infinity sign went all crazy there. Would equal 8. Awesome. That's called converging. When you add the numbers, it approaches a number. It gets really, really close to 8. So we just say it is 8. A divergent series. A divergent series is not going to approach something. That's what happens when you have an infinite series like this, where the R value is greater than 1, or the R value is less than negative 1. So if you look, my R value here is times 2. If you look below, this one is also times 2. I'm going to dot, dot, dot. If you were to start adding these up, oh, well, let's do the first one. Let's do this one here, the one in red. If I was to add the first couple terms. 
So the sum of the first two terms. 2 plus, oh, sorry. They're using a different sequence here. They're doing this one. So if I was to add the first two terms, 4 plus 8 equals 12. If I was to add the first three terms, 4 plus 8 plus 16 would equal 28. If I was to do the first four terms, it would equal 60. If I did the first five terms, it would do 124. And you notice that this is just getting larger and larger, right? These numbers just keep growing. If I did the sum of the first six, it would be even bigger. If I did the first sum of the seven, it would get even bigger. Sum of the first eight, it would get even bigger. And this number is just getting larger and larger and larger because the next number that I add on is just a bigger number every single time. That's called a divergent series because it's going on forever and ever and ever. I like to say that the sum of this infinite series equals infinity. Right? If I was to keep adding this, it's just going to keep getting larger to a point where I wouldn't know how big that number is anymore. It doesn't even have a value. It's called infinity. Awesome. So we do have a formula here. This formula only works for convergent series. So this is the formula. All right, where S of that's infinity sign. So the sum of the infinite series is the first term divided by 1 minus the rate in which you're growing. The ratio. Awesome. Let's try using it. So determine R and state whether a sum, of, sum to infinity exists. Calculate the sum if possible. Let's look at this first one. If I want to figure out R, you take a number. Let's take negative 5. And you divide it by the number in front of it. That means R is going to be negative 5 in this case. If you're not sure, you could do it again. So r equals, take a number in the series, let's take 25, and divide it by the number in front of it, in this case, negative 5. And you get that r equals negative 5. Wonderful. Because r is less than negative 1, this is a divergent series. It is not approaching anything. So we cannot calculate the sum of the infinite series. This is a very unique one um, because the next number in line will always be a bigger number. But sometimes it's adding, sometimes it's subtracting. So that's kind of just a cool idea to think about that if I always added on something that was bigger than it was before, and then the next number would always be a subtraction of the bigger number, you would realize that your series is kind of bouncing back and forth in between infinity and negative infinity because uh, my series would eventually get so big that those numbers would be positive negative infinity, positive infinity, negative infinity, positive infinity, negative infinity. Positive infinity, negative infinity. Which, if you're interested in any of that, I highly recommend that you take um, some university math courses and you can, or even physics courses, and you talk about infinite numbers and go in depth into that kind of uh, wormhole of ideas. It's very cool. Awesome. Point is, this is divergent because r is less than negative 1. If I look over here to calculate r, you take a number. Let's take 1 over 3. And you divide it by the number in front of it. So I do 1 over 3 divided by 1. I get 0 0.3 repeated. That's the same thing as saying 1 over 3. So R equals 1 over 3. Wonderful. Because R is in between 1 and negative 1. Whoa. Yeah. Then this is convergent. That means we can use this formula. The sum of the infinite series equals the first term divided by 1 minus r. So if we wanted to figure out what this series would add up to be, we're just going to use that formula. So the sum of the infinite series equals the first term, which is 1, divided by 1 minus 1 over 3. 
This means that the sum of the infinite series equals 1 over 2 over 3. If you put that in your calculator, I um, highly recommend that you use brackets in the denominator so your calculator knows that 2 over 3 is um, in the denominator together as a fraction. The sum of this infinite series would equal 1.5. Awesome. Last one. This says the sum of an infinite geometric series is 18. That tells me that the sum of the geometric series equals 18. If the first term is 12, first term is 12, what is the value of R? R equals question mark. To do this, we're going to use our formula. So our formula is S of infinity equals T of 1 over 1 minus R. Let's plug in our values. That means 18 equals 12 divided by 1 minus R. If I want to try to get R by itself, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 minus R like that. So cancel it on the right side and I would have 1 minus r times 18 equals 12. Then I would divide both sides by 18. That would give me 1 minus r equals, if you put 12 divided by 18 in your calculator, you can use the decimal or the fraction, it's your choice. You could use 0 0.66666, repeat it, or you could math fract that to become two over three. Then I'm gonna subtract one from both sides. This means negative r equals, and again, you could use the decimal, which would be negative 0 0.3333, or you could say negative one third. The key here on this question is understanding that that negative sign is still in front of that r, and that is like a negative 1. So I have to divide both sides by negative 1 to get my final answer. And we do that, you get that r equals 1 over 3. That's the ratio that that infinite geometric series is increasing or decreasing by. In this case, it's increasing, or it's the series is decreasing by multiplying by one third every time you go from one number to the next. Cool. That's infinite geometric sequences and series. I think a very interesting, fun topic. Take care of yourselves. I hope to see some of you soon.